Did you know that sloths are classified as critically endangered and are on the red list of threatened species? Their population has been decreasing rapidly, which means that there's only 500 to 1,500 sloths left in the world. Word is, these creatures have gone up into space which means that they have been orbiting around the Earth, classifying themselves as an orbital sloth, which means that, wait, what? Oh, we're not talking about orbital sloths? Oh, an orbital sloth. Even better. <laughs> hundred and seventy one satellites orbiting in space right now whoa what 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 and none of these are sloths who would have guessed space it seems unlimited but there is not much that we can actually use we can only use what's in the main three orbits, Leo, Mio, and Geo, because they're so close to us, and not way, way, way out into space, whoa! It's like water. There's so much water on the planet, but you wouldn't want to drink that salty seawater. Gross. You'd want to drink fresh water. Oh, thanks. Mmm, refreshing. But there's not a lot of it. And this is exactly like space. To get a satellite into space, a country would need to get an orbital slot. These slots consist of a spot and a frequency that the satellite can use to transmit a signal to Earth. The International Telecommunications Union, or ITU, ooh, is an organization that helps distribute these slots. Their main job is to focus on standards, problems, solutions, and working on a census. That's a lot. But they were originally created for equality, even though now they don't really do a lot to help with emerging problems that countries have been facing over the past couple of years. And this can be a problem because they tend to just put countries in line for an orbital slot they will never be able to obtain. And no one likes waiting in lines, especially for something that they really want. Like, for example, food. Waiting in lines is the worst. But why can't the ITU just give a country a slot when they need them? Well, there are not many slots for the ITU to give out. Oh. When countries first started putting satellites up into space, it was mainly the more developed countries. This was because they had more money, so they had more advanced technology. But there was a problem with this because that meant that they were taking all of the slots, even if they didn't need it for that time, but they kept them for the future. But why would the ITU give a country a slot if it doesn't need it? That slot could have been given to a country that actually needed it in the future. But this is where the problem is. These first world countries got all of these slots in the beginning by using paper satellites. What's a paper satellite? A paper satellite is a satellite that is only written down on paper and is never actually put up into space. First world countries would use these satellites to get an orbital slot from the ITU and pretty much just hold it for them until they needed it. However, if a country hadn't used an orbital slot in seven years or more, the ITU could take this orbital slot away from them and give it to a country that actually needed it. But first world countries got around this rule too. Oh, uh, no they didn't. They rent out their slots to second and third world countries so that they can still get those slots back if they need them. That's not fair. It isn't fair. But this problem is only going to get worse as time goes by. Everyone wants to be number one. Whether it's being MVP on your basketball team, getting the lead role in your school play, or just being at the top of your class. This is how it is with e-waste and later in space. In the 1970s, there was a big push for countries trying to get into the digital age. And this was mainly because the introduction of the first computer. Oh, well, thanks. This is cool. Very cool. Extra aimly cool. 
When countries first started getting into the digital age, it was mainly a lot of first world countries, and they decided to donate their old electronics to second and third world countries, thinking that they were helping. But they were actually hurting a lot more than they were helping. And we can see a similar parallel to in space, and how countries are starting to get into the space age, but first world countries such as China, Russia, and the US have a strong advantage. These more developed countries are in possession of most of the orbital slots, which means that it is extremely hard for these smaller countries to be able to get their satellites into space. Now, however, larger countries have been renting out their orbital slots to smaller countries, but there's still a huge injustice with this whole issue. And the parallel to e-waste is that both of these situations are taking advantage of these smaller second and third world countries. Now in space, this is because first world countries can take back their orbital slots at any time, which means that these second and third world countries have to let their satellite fly into space or get rid of it totally, making it a total injustice. Think of it this way. Let's say your teacher has a couple of copies of different outlines and study guides for the test. Your friend Mary walks up and asks your teacher for one of the study guides. Then your friend Jane goes up to your teacher and he also gives her a study guide. When you go up to your teacher, he says he already gave away all the study guides. Then your friend Mary says that you can borrow hers because she is not using it and wants to be nice. While you're studying, she grabs it from your hand and says that she needs it to study. Now that you don't have a study guide, you're at a disadvantage and you fail the test. Oh no. We can think of orbital slots and their injustice in this exact way. Now first, think of your teacher as the ITU handing out orbital slots or study guides whenever they're needed. Then think of your crazy friends as some of the bigger countries like China, Russia, and the US who already have slots up in space. Then think of you getting an F as some of the smaller countries such as Estonia, Bolivia, and Nigeria. Just like these smaller countries, the girl in the example got an F on her test because she didn't have the study guides when some of her friends did have the study guides so they had a stronger advantage giving them an A on the test. But as we can see, these first world countries can take away orbital slots from these second and third world countries whenever they want, giving them an advantage and these second and third world countries a very strong disadvantage. And this is not fair at all. As time progresses, this problem has only been getting worse. As technology increases, there's more e-waste being accumulated and more satellites are being made, causing second and third world countries to have more e-waste and not enough orbital slots. The continuation of these problems is making second and third world countries kind of give up. With e-waste, that has been a problem for a long time, so there hasn't been much change, and this is causing second and third world countries receiving the e-waste to think that this is a norm and that they can't do anything about it. Similar to orbital slots and in space, we can see how second and third world countries are already starting to try less and less to get their own slots because they know how difficult it is to receive their own orbital slot. Not only are these problems having a negative effect on the second and third world countries themselves, but also the people who are living there. It is giving them extreme injuries that are hurting them not only now physically, but also in the future. Electronics are usually built with metals that break when exported to other countries. This causes hazardous chemicals and chemical compounds such as lead, mercury, arsenic, and barium to seep into the soil. If these chemicals are taken into the body, they can cause serious health problems. We might not think of this as a lot, but the average computer screen has five to eight pounds of lead, which is roughly 28 of these bubble wands. But when we really think about it, these people are scavenging through this broken e-waste. And not only are they getting physically hurt, but are also getting lifelong health problems that they're gonna live with for the rest of their lives and eventually cut their lives short. For orbital slots, this is affecting the entire world! Whoa! Science! The thing is, is that these second and third world countries have such a big disadvantage. Because even if they do finally get a satellite up into space, they're renting out this slot. Which means that it's not their own. 
They just got great technology brought to their country, great communication that a satellite brings. But the fact that it's not their own slot means that these first world countries can take away these slots at any time. Which means that all of this hard work, hard effort, and billions of dollars that these smaller countries put into this satellite goes to waste when their satellite just kind of gets pushed to the side by more powerful countries. And since these countries are so small and less developed, all this money, time, and effort means so much more to them than it actually does to some of the bigger countries. It's game time. Here's a little game to help explain how orbital slots work up in space. All of these girls in the game represent a different country, whether it's one of the first world countries or a second and third world country. One person representing the ITU stands in the middle. The remaining people stand around the ITU ready to run to try to get to one of the bigger country's slots, which are the safe spaces. When the ITU yells, find a slot, the smaller countries run and the ITU is constantly trying to tag one of the second and third world countries. If a smaller country gets to a first world country, they are safe and they have a slot for their satellite. Yay! However, if a big country closes their arms at any time, they signal that they are using their slot. A bigger country can also kick a smaller country out at any time, causing them to have to find a new slot or run from the ITU. The ITU represents someone waiting in line for a slot, and they want to tag someone so that they can have a chance to get their satellite into space in one of these first world countries' slots. We can see from this game that it's not fair that second and third world countries don't have their own orbital slots. Because as we saw in the game, sometimes some of the girls could close up. So then the second and third world countries couldn't go to the slot. And other times they would be able to get in a slot, but then get pushed out when the first world country actually needed the slot. And this might not seem like a problem in our world today, but it is extremely affecting us in our own lives. But we tend not to see it this way, because we tend to see things that are only directly affecting us right here, right now. But this is affecting us in space, and it's an emerging problem that is only going to get worse over time. Every time we watch TV or use our cell phones, we are using satellites to transmit signals back and forth. Although we might only see this technology as useful to binge watch shows on Netflix or play games on our phones, it's so much more. However, it is not just that we are pushing these other countries down, but the fact that we're pushing ourselves up in negative ways. These second and third world countries are not being treated fairly and are not given the same opportunities when it comes to distribution of these opportunities and privileges within society and especially within space. These first world countries are going around the ITU's whole system of equality and equal opportunities for all of the countries to get an orbital slot and to have their satellite in space. But the main problem is with us. We tend to think that these issues aren't affecting us because in the world, they're happening 20,000 miles away. But we need to realize that they're affecting us right here on Earth. And remember, a sloth is similar though not orbital, to an orbital slot. And this is because sloths are an endangered species. And we might not think orbital slots are limited, but they are. The only thing is, don't get them confused, because that would be hard to explain. <laughs>